Here we are. I know how everyone loves fractions. Well, we're going to make them a lot less scary. When I was a student, a college algebra student, like many of you, I did not feel at all comfortable with fractions. And when we got to this part of the class, I finally understood fractions and lost my fear. So I hope that some of you will experience that. So let's go. There are some steps to solving rational equations. Those are fraction equations. Now, if we temporarily cover, so let me make this somewhat bigger. If we temporarily cover this, what we have is a rational expression. But once you have an equal sign, well, I love that. Once you have an equal sign, you have an equation and equations mean you're actually going to solve for the variable. It also means when you've got a fraction that has a variable on the bottom, you've got to check and find out what numbers your answer cannot be. What numbers will make the rational e equation undefined? So, that's what we have to do. That's what this first step is. And you always do it. So, I usually list the denominators and set them equal to zero. But wait a minute, three cannot equal zero. 3x can equal 0 if that, or z, if this had been a 3z, I could have set it equal to 0 and solved for z. But there is no such animal here. There's only a number 3, and number 3 cannot equal number 0. So let's forget about that. Instead, we'll just solve here. I'll subtract 2 and subtract 2. Z equals negative 2. What that means is if any of our answers are negative 2, then we can't accept the answer and that and and if that's the only solution to the equation, then um, uh, we can't accept it and the answer will be no solution. Okay, so Z cannot equal, Z cannot be allowed to equal negative two. Now that we know that, we can go on. Normally, we would cal uh, calculate the lowest common multiple, but we don't have to do it here. And then we would multiply each term in the lowest common multiple, the LCM, by each, um, by each term in the equation, but we don't have to do that here. Why do we not have to do it here? Because this is a proportion. When you have one fraction equals one fraction, you can solve it in, well, you can skip these intermediate signs and you could, I suppose, solve it in one step or at least two because proportions are so great because you can cross multiply. Remember doing that? Cross multiplying is something you can do 
when you have an equation that consists only of one fraction equals one fraction. You make an invisible kind of X through the equation and the, uh, the diagonals of the X cross at the equal sign and you multiply along the diagonals like this. Three times Z minus five equals two times C plus two. And then all we have to do is solve that. And we actually never encounter fractions until maybe the answer is a fraction. Okay, so let me erase my invisible X here so that you can see the numbers. And just imagine there being an invisible X. Here we have three times C minus five and two times C plus two. So I'm just going to solve that. I will distribute the three, three Z minus 15 equals 2z plus 4 so 3z minus 2z I'll subtract 2z over here so that I can isolate my Z terms on one side of the equation and my number terms on the other side. All right, 2Z minus 2Z is zero. 3Z minus 2Z is one Z, which is just Z, minus 15 equals four, bring down the four. Now I add 15 to both sides. And so I'll have Z equals 19. Now the, uh, really? Yeah. Okay. So Z equals 19. is our answer. And the most important thing is that it doesn't equal negative two. So we're home safe. And you can check your answer if you want to. What this means by check really is make sure your answer is not your, your bad boy, your absolute no answer. That is, it's an absolute no. OK, but let's do it. Z minus 5, 19 minus 5 over 19 plus 2. That's going to be 14 over 21, which is 2 over 3. So woo woo, it checks. And we didn't have to waste a lot of time doing the intermediate steps. We could just get right to it, but that only happens when you have one fraction equals one fraction. And that doesn't often happen. Like here, here we have three fractions. But notice, we only have one denominator that can be zero. There has to be a variable in it. Seven can't be zero, three can't be zero, but A can be zero. A is the only thing in the denominator. So when I set it equal to zero, well, that sort of solves it, doesn't it? A cannot be zero.
OK, so we know what our answer cannot be. And that's important. Now here we're going to go through the whole process again, and we do need every single denominator. The lowest common multiple is the smallest number that each of those denominators can go into evenly. It's just like the LCD, which is the lowest common denominator, but we don't need a lowest common denominator here. Instead, we use something called the lowest common multiple. And what we need is one expression that can cancel out Let's make it bigger to make sure you can see it. That can cancel out seven and three and A, the three denominators, but it has to do it all at once. So to cancel out seven and three, I need 21 because seven times three is 21, and then I also have to cancel out an A. So A has to be in there too. So 21A is going to be my LCM. And this is how we're going to use it. 1 7 minus 2 thirds Notice how funny I drew those fraction bars. That's because of what I'm about to do. Let me write this in violet. This is the strategy for solving rational equations, all the ones that are not proportions. I multiply each numerator, or every term actually, I multiply every term in this equation, one, two, three terms, I multiply them by 21A. 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 Now look what that does for me. Twenty-one is three times seven. So I could have actually left it that way, couldn't I? And I don't really need to do this here, but I might as well. The sevens will cancel out. The threes will cancel out. The A's will cancel out. And without denominators, I don't have a fraction. Is that cool? It is. OK, what's left over then? 1 times 3 times A, that's 3A, minus 2 times 7 times A, that's 14A, equals 3 times 7. All I have to do is solve that equation and look how easy it is to solve when there are no fractions. I don't have to worry about adding, subtracting, and multiplying fractions and all that because we got rid of the fractions. 
So 3a minus 14a is negative 11a equals 21. And then I divide both sides by negative 11. The negatives cancel, the 11s cancel. I'm left with an A on the left and a negative 21 11s on the right. All I have to do is go back here and make sure that my answer is not this number. And then I can put this in the answer box. Ta-da! So my aim today, my real goal today, my secret objective is to make this whole thing easier than it's ever been. Once you understand LCMs, you understand LCDs, and they become a lot less confusing. All right, let's do this. Notice that we have exactly one denominator. This is not a fraction. This is a fraction. This is not a fraction. So this is the only denominator I have to worry about. Y equals zero. Just like the last problem. So all I have to worry about is making sure that whatever answer I get is not allowed to be zero. And if it is zero, then my answer is no solution. Because I cannot accept any number that will make any of the denominators, there's only one here, but any of the denominators zero. Okay, well, let's calculate the lowest common multiple. To do that, I list all the denominators. But what are the denominators? One, one, and y. Y is the only one that can be a denominator. So my LCM, y is the only denominator, right? One times y times one. I mean, it's, it's y. My LCM in this case is just going to be y. Just why? Okay. So, having discovered 3 over y. I think that's it. Let me go back up and make sure. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. There's my original equation. This is what I'm going to do with my LCM Y. Times Y, times Y. These aren't fractions, so all I do is multiply by the LCM. Up here, this is a fraction. So I multiply up here in the numerator only by y. That conveniently cancels out the y down here, and I now have this equation. y squared plus 3 equals negative 4. Y. That's a quadratic equation, so I'll use the zero principle. Plus 4Y, plus 4Y. What the zero principle says is I have to make sure there's a zero 
on this side of the equal sign, the other side from where the y squared is with all of its other terms. So that means I will have y squared plus 4y plus 3 equals 0. So I'll fact, there's a 1 leading coefficient, so all I have to do is make parentheses and equals 0 and factor the 3. 3 equals 1 times 3, that's all it equals, and 1 plus 3 equals 4. Forgive me, I lied, it also equals negative 1 times negative 3, but we don't need those because this is positive. I need two terms that will add up to a positive term. That'll be 1 and 3. So I'll, I'll uh, divide up, kind of, I'll separate my y and my y from of the y squared, and then I'll take plus one, and I'll take plus three. Set each of these binomial factors of y squared plus four y plus three equal to zero. Minus one, minus one y equals negative 1. Minus 3, minus 3. y equals negative 3. Are either of these that number? No! So what I'll do is I will put both of them in the answer box. And these are the basic steps you'll go to every time you solve a rational equation. Discussion now. Is there any discussion of this, this, or this? I have a question. Sure. So is y or the, the denominator always going to equal zero? That's how you find out what you cannot allow the answer to be, yes. Okay, okay. Okay. That was the only question. <laughs> oh, sure. It was just that one. Oh, okay. All right. Thank okay. you. Now we get into the challenging ones, but we're going to follow exactly the same steps. I have a denominator here, and a denominator here, and a denominator here. So I list them. Then I factor anything that's factorable. Well, only this. This is the difference of two perfect squares. This is y squared minus four squared. So it factors into, excuse me, y and y and four and four. Oh, I've got the hiccups. Excuse me. Okay, so I could see writing the LCM as y minus four, 
y plus 4, y minus 4, and y plus 4. You know, multiplying everything together using that as the LCM in order to cancel out that and that and that. However, it's really, really overkill. Because notice this, this Well, no, better way to show it. This, this denominator, where am I gonna make an arrow? Let's make it blue. This denominator could be taken care of by that factor in here. And this denominator could be taken care of by that factor in there. And this denominator could be taken care of by the whole thing. After all, this equals that. So really, we only need this to be our LCM because it takes care of every denominator down there. So my LCM is going to be, and we always write it in factored form, y plus 4 times y minus 4. And now, this is what we're going to do with that equation. I'm going to copy it down, um, down below because I can't see back up and I don't like to keep rolling back up. Okay, I just want to be able to see it. Because I'm going to, of necessity, write these fractions in a special way with a very long fraction bar. Why? No, I want to write in pencil. Because you're probably writing in pencil, so you can erase. y over y minus 4 plus y over y plus 4 times y minus 4. Remember, this is y plus 4 times y minus 4. Equals y plus 5, yeah, and I am going to put these in parentheses when they have more than one term, over y plus 4. It's just easier that way. And I write the LCM, which is y plus 4 times y minus 4, up here. Okay, so that is the whole idea of finding the LCM. Notice that when you've got the correct LCM, you will find a factor up here 
that cancels a factor down there. Y plus four cancels Y plus four, Y minus four cancels Y minus four, and Y plus four cancels Y plus four. So now you don't have any denominators. Technically, the denominators are one. All right, so now I write the leftovers. Need to do that before I scroll up. Y times Y plus four plus Y equals Y plus five times Y minus four. Now, I distribute over here. And then just copy down this plus y. Over here, y times y, y times minus four, five times y, five times minus four, will give me y squared minus four, 4y plus 5y minus 20. Okay, then I go back and I combine like terms on each side of the equation. There now. Now I am ready to decide on my strategy. My first inclination is to take everything from over here on the left and move it over to the right. So as I start doing that, Look what I notice. Y squared minus Y squared is zero. And Y squared minus Y squared is zero. That usually doesn't happen. But what it means is I now have an equation. 5Y equals Y or 1Y minus 20. Check this out. This is a linear equation. All we have to do is get our y terms together and solve. So I'll subtract y from both sides. And continue up here. 5y minus y is 4y equals y minus y is 0, negative 20. And then I divide by 4, and I divide by 4. So my answer is negative 5. And I just remembered, I never did this. Oops, I never did this. I stuck this. Okay. I jumped the gun. I should have put this down here and found out what X can, what Y cannot equal in this step. Hmm. I'll have to make that, corrections, that correction 
before I download your notes. But right now, we must come up here and find out what X cannot equal. All right, so Y minus four cannot equal zero, so I set it equal to zero, just to find out what that number would be. Four. Okay, and y squared minus 16 equals zero. Well, we need to find out. So y plus four times y minus four equals zero, which gives us y plus four equals zero and y minus four equals zero and go through the whole rigmarole of solving these little equations. Subtract four from both sides over here on the left, you get y equals negative four, and uh, add four to both sides, you'll get y equals positive four, and then come over here to y plus four equals zero, and subtract four and subtract four, the same old dance and you get y equals negative four, all of which means y cannot equal negative four, y cannot equal four, y cannot equal negative four. There are two numbers that y can definitely not equal. y cannot equal four, and y cannot equal negative four. And if it does, no solution. But, but, Look what y equals. Negative five, which is definitely not negative four or positive four. So I can go with that answer. And put it in the answer box. So let me make this smaller so we can view the whole page or almost the whole page together. Do you want to discuss any of this? Other than the fact that this should have gone there and this should have gone there. Do you understand how y squared minus 16 got factored into y plus four times y minus four. Okay. We'll go on to another one. And I'm not going to go too fast this time. All right, let's look at the denominators. I would be doing this in pencil. C squared minus 7Z plus 6. Z minus 6 and for z minus four. Right now, we're trying to find out what z's, right, let me put this up here, z minus six, what z's I have to be aware of because we can't let our answers equal those. So, all right, we factor. Well, let's see. We want two factors of six that will add up to negative seven. If I factor six into negative one times 
negative six, then if I add those together, I get negative seven. So I'll put a minus one here and a minus six here. And then I set each of these factors equal to zero. And then go through my whole process. I'll add one to both sides here. So Z is going to equal one. I add six to both sides here. So Z is going to equal six. But that means I cannot allow Z to equal one and I cannot allow Z to equal six. So the same thing over here. I add six to both sides. So I get Z equals six. And I add four to both sides. And I'm going through all the steps here because this is slightly more complicated. 4z equals 4, divide by 4, divide by 4. z equals 1, which means z cannot equal 1. So all things considered let us consider some things. Six, six, one, one. There are only two numbers that I have to worry about. That's enough. I have to make sure that whatever my answers are, I don't allow Z to equal one, and I don't allow Z to equal six. Those are the troublemakers. Okay. Now, now I list the denominators. Although this, this step made us factor them, so that's gonna be pretty easy to do. Just copy down the factors, this and that. Those are the factors of z squared minus 7z plus 6. Now I'm going to do something that seems a little strange. I'm just going to rewrite z minus 6 as z minus 6. And I'm going to rewrite z minus 1 as z minus 1. Notice that this factor is in there, and this is in there. So if I clobbered Z minus one by Z minus one times Z minus six, I would automatically cancel out Z minus one. Same way with this automatically canceling out Z minus six. Same way with this automatically canceling out that. So our LCM, ah, uh, but that's not true because, ooh, this is for Z minus four, which is changing the story a little bit, but not entirely. How shall I do this? This is four times Z minus one. 
So the Z minus one part is taken care of up there, but not the four. We're gonna to have to put in the four so that when we clobber the four, it gets canceled out. So our LCM is gonna be this, yes, because it takes care of that part and that part, but we're also going to have to put a four in front of it. So our LCM is going to be four times C minus one times Z minus six. And as you'll see with the four there, every part of the denominators, every part of each denominator gets taken care of. By taking care of. By taking care of, I mean canceled out. And that's just so I can see it. All right, here we go. No. Four over Oh, that's Z minus six times Z minus one. Minus one over Z minus six equals one over four times C minus one. Okay. That's the uh, factored version of this original equation. Now I'm going to multiply each term by four times C minus one times C minus six. that, I want this. Okay, once we've done that, we cancel. Z minus one cancels Z minus one. Z minus six cancels Z minus six. Z minus six cancels Z minus six. Four cancels four. And Z minus one cancels Z minus one. And all my denominators are gone. If I hadn't added the four, that is multiplied by the four, but if I hadn't put the four in, we would be stuck with a four there. And that would be problematic. So now I use the, um, the leftovers actually, four times four is 16 minus one times four times Z minus one. Equals 
1 times z minus 6. And now I just solve that equation. And I don't have to deal with fractions, at least for a little while. This is a negative 4 times z, that's a minus 4z. Or if you prefer, this is minus 4 times minus 1, that'll give you a plus 4 equals z minus 6. Now 16 plus 4 is 20, so you'll have 20 minus 4z equals z minus 6. And so we need to get our um, variable terms on one side of the equal sign and the constant terms on the other side. So I'm going to add 4z to both sides of the equation. That'll give me 20 equals, this is 1z up here, 5z minus 6, then I add 6, and I add 6. And that gives me 26 equals 5z. Divide by 5, divide by 5. So z equals 26 over 5. Does that look right? It looks right to me, actually. All right, so that will go in my answer box. And notice that no matter how ugly these are, no matter how involved, how scary, the steps are exactly the same. You find the values that will make this equation undefined, that is, they make one of the denominators or more than one of the denominators equal zero. Those will be what you cannot allow your answer to equal. Now our answer is 26 over five, which is definitely not one or six. So after you find out what those numbers are, you find out what the lowest common multiple is, and you do that just by factoring everything to see what factors need to be canceled out so that you can think in terms of little things rather than big things. Big things are really scary, but once you factor this, you find out, oh gosh, well this is in there and most of this is in there. so that your LCM doesn't have to be anywhere near as gigantic as it might have been. If you had just taken this times this times this, can you imagine how awful that would be? I can't. Well, I can. I don't want to think about it. All right, then you multiply every term by the LCM, and what that consists of is multiplying on the numerator when, when you've got all fractions. And then you cancel out your denominators, which is the whole job of the LCM. It's to cancel out denominators, get rid of them, so you don't have to deal with them. So you have a much easier time solving the equation. Same exact steps over and over and over again. Okay, 
I think there's one more. Yeah. Oh, and I put a blank sheet here if, just in case you wanted to print it off and use it. Make a giant flashcard out of it or something. OK. Well, we're going to do all the same things again. Except I want to pretend I'm you. And I see you in my head writing with a pencil. Because then nothing you do is permanent and can always be corrected. All right. Well, these two are gonna be easy and quick to solve. Let's take care of this. Um, this is three X squared minus three times 25 equals zero. So that'll be three times X squared minus 25 equals zero, which will be three times x plus five times x minus five equals zero. And so, yes, I'm about to run out of room there. So I'm going to erase that one for the minute and put it over here, see if that works. Okay. So three won't equal zero, will it? I mean, it can't, but X plus five can equal zero. That X plus five and that x minus 5 can equal 0. Oh, and look, when I solve these two, I solve these two automatically. So minus 5 minus 5, x equals negative 5, and uh, plus 5 plus 5. x equals positive 5. So what do we know here? That x cannot be allowed to equal negative 5, and x cannot be allowed to equal 5. But 3 has nothing to do with this process. If it were 3x, you would set it equal to 0 and solve for x. But just a three can never equal a zero. So in this step, we just don't care about it. All that's going to matter is that X cannot be allowed to equal negative five and X cannot be allowed to equal five. That's all that matters in this step. Now we come down here to calculate the lowest common multiple and three does matter because the, the denominator three X squared minus 75 equals this. Three times X plus five times X minus five. And then you've got X plus five and X minus five. Those are other denominators. So X plus five is right there. And X minus five 
is right there. So this actually contains all we need. So that's going to be our LCM. And this will take care of that and take care of that and take care of that. Mr. Henry, yes. Like, I see what's happening here, but I don't understand it. When okay. you took Where the cancel those out on the LCMs. Yes, LCMs will cancel out this denominator and this denominator and this denominator. But to find it, you have to factor anything that's factorable. So this is factorable. See okay. over here, the yeah, LCM I think canceled out the denominator. Yeah, I, I think I understand all that. I'm trying to figure out what we're doing here on the X plus five equals X plus five. Oh, well, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I'm just trying to put it directly underneath the corresponding part in this one to show okay. that this, this is in there and this is in there. God, OK, that makes sense. OK, OK, great. Thank you. Anybody else feel free, please speak out. Not Amazon. There. OK. See, I'm kind of taking mental notes for the future. I'm realizing that when I put the question up there, I'm also going to have to put it there because I need to scroll down. Okay, so I have to write this, this, these, this in particular in factored form, but now I'm going to write the equation. One over three times X plus five times X minus five plus four over x minus five equals five over x plus five. And I'm going to multiply up here and up here and up here by three times X plus five times X minus five. Okay, now three cancels, three X plus five cancels X plus five, and X minus five cancels X minus five, and X minus five cancels X minus five, and X plus five cancels X plus five. And all my 
denominators and every part of each denominator is gone. With there technically being a one underneath, you have to remember that. It's not nothing. It's not a vacuum. All right, well, all we've got left here is a one. Plus, four times three times X plus five, that's 12 times X plus five equals five times three times X minus five. And doesn't that look prettier? I think it does. So one plus 12 X plus 60 equals 15 X minus 75, I think. 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2, yes. Okay. Now I'll combine these two like terms, 60 plus 1 is 61. We'll have 12x plus 61 equals 15x minus 75. Almost done. Minus 12 X minus 12 X. So we'll have 61 equals uh, 3 X minus 75. And then I'll add 75 to both sides. One plus five is six. Six plus seven is 13. These guys zero out, leaving me with three X. I divide by three. I divide by three. And I check and see if that will break down one third. Uh, uh, uh. 136 divided by 3. I'm going to math frack it. Math frack. Enter. Nope, it won't break down. Okay, that is our answer. But what do we know? Well, we just found out it won't break down, so 3 doesn't go evenly into 136 which means it's not going to equal either negative five or five. So I would put this in the answer box and hopefully get told, good work. Fantastic, terrific. questions about this or any of this because I think we're done. Yeah, this is your blank page for you to print off and use if you want to. Again, it's all in the steps. Well then, I want to a 
Aha, just show you briefly what we're going to be covering tomorrow. You'll have a blank sheet for this tomorrow, but we are going to be talking about analyzing rational functions and graphing them. You're not actually going to have to graph them, but you are going to have to choose the correct graph. Okay, so this, we're going to do this tomorrow. And so, just so you know in advance, the steps to doing this are first you find the domain, and we have been finding the domain of rational expressions and rational equations, well, not so much, but sort of. Um, now we're going to find the domain of rational functions, which is nothing new. We do it like that. So that's totally been done before. But then you're going to meet something called a vertical asymptote, a VA, VA. Vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote, which is called an HA. Well, you, ha, 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 ha. It's called <clears throat> a horizontal asymptote. And we're going to be finding the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. These kind of purplish lines are the vertical asymptotes that create a wall and the graph never crosses the wall. Um, this blue line is on the x-axis. It's the horizontal asymptote. That's what asymptotes are. They're not really there, but they are sort of. They're invisible, in other words. So we're going to be looking at some fractions that are not particularly scary and their graphs, and some that are kind of scary. But by the time you get done tomorrow, you are going to know everything there is to know about rational functions. Because you'll know the five things that go into analyzing them. Domain, vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, x-intercept, y-intercept. So get your brain ready. 